So this episode is going to be all about what we did with Ho-Ho's speech issues. The first thing we want to do is find out what are his capabilities and where do we begin our intervention. In this video, you'll see Ambrose has got a book and he's seeing whether he's able to maybe copy some of the sounds or some of the words in that book. <laughs> So we thought we'd see, does he understand about the words of things, uh, labels, and maybe if we give him a bit easier label to say, would he be able to copy, you know, our, our speech? So you'll see in this next video, uh, we've got some things on the table. It's very quick to identify a lot of those things. So he's clearly got a lot of vocabulary, but when Ambrose asks him to just copy what he says, he's not really able to very reliably copy much. It's very difficult to discriminate any of the words from what he kind of repeats back. Oh, you can see that he does make some sounds sometimes, right? He will, you know, emit some uh, sounds uh, at the right time when Ambrose maybe asks him to copy what he says, but it's very far away from the words or the things that Ambrose has, has actually said. Here's another example of that, and Ambrose is just picking up some items. He really likes cars. Play-Doh is another object, an iPad he loves. When Ambrose asks him, what is it? Uh, he'll usually just go through some different sounds. There doesn't seem to be much consistency with what sound he makes in relation to those uh, objects. And the sounds he makes, you know, are also, you know, kind of far away from maybe the words. <laughs> Okay, We also wanted to see what does he do when he wants something. So you'll see in this video, Ambrose has got the iPad and seeing what he'll say when he wants to get to play it. We can see from these baseline videos there's a number of different issues that we can maybe help with. One is that he may need to get better at his sound production in terms of, you know, when we say a sound or a word that he's more able to accurately copy um, what that is. Um, we'd love to see him uh, associate those sounds that he can now make with actually objects. So that if he's going to make a request, he knows that that's a mmm or a milk, and that is an iPad, um, and that he would reliably be able to do that. I think also being able to expressively label, i.e. when we pick something up or we ask him what it is, and for him to be able to make a sound or a word that's related to that consistently, um, without us saying the word at all, it would also be a very, very important goal for him. So there are a lot of strategies we use through the five days. I'm going to share with you what we did. Um, and so you can see the different approaches to try to solve some of those problems. So in terms of sound production, um, one of the things we felt we needed to do is really go back to sort of individual sounds because words are a bit too much of a mouthful for him right now. We want to work towards that. Here's a video of Ambrose and he's basically starting with the vowel sounds, which are usually a bit easier for students to copy and make. Okay, in addition to that, um, we also looked at his ability to move his face and sort of copy what we do. 
um, with our lips, with our tongue, so that he could pay a bit more attention to those details, which is also quite important and very helpful when you're learning to say uh, different sounds. Here's a video of Smitty and she's getting him to open his mouth and close his mouth, which is assisting with his ability to say the ah sound and the mm sound, which is a bit of a new sound for him actually in that week. He wasn't able to say that in the beginning and that was one of our target sounds. You can see he's quite reliable and very good and quick at making those changes with his mouth, which was a really good improvement by the end of the week. Another way that we worked on him copying sounds is that we didn't necessarily specifically pick a firm target like the mm sound. We just did a lot of play and with those play items we associated different sounds with those actions or those toys which we thought might be quite fun for him. We could include a lot of his preferred items and stimulate to try to copy and follow um, the words that we were saying. So in the next video there's two examples. One was with the car because he loves the car and we're trying to get him to say boop boop and the other is drinking out of the can and saying glug glug. Boop, boop. Now you'll see from the video He's not super accurate, but he does seem to say a pretty similar sound each time. Um, and we were very happy with that. And we did that across many different toys, uh, associating some different fun sounds that would be um, related to the actions that we were doing. Another thing we wanted to incorporate was some songs and music because he really likes that as well. We did some sequence of filling in the gaps. When it gets to a certain point, we stop it and we want him to like indicate or to say, to sing or to say the next bit of the songs. One little finger, one little finger, one little finger. Ah, ah, ah. That, that, that walking up. Point your finger. Ah, ah. Hi, The Communication Temptations is really one of the programs that we love to do a lot in, in our office. It's really, really good at helping students to understand about communication, um, you know, making sounds initially to get the things that they want. It's a fun program. You can do it in so many different ways. And so we wanted to kind of bring mum in to see if she was able to uh, learn a little bit of that and to see if she could apply those techniques so that she could maybe take that home and do that around some of his toys and activities. So we were happy to see the skills also transferred to mum, that he was quite good at being able to, you know, say the right word for the car and for the iPad. The last program we spent a lot of time on, and this is really having him associate those sounds he's able to make with an object. This is a really important program because it also relates to when he's making a request. And if he's going to make a request, he needs to know what sound to make or what word to say. This is where we got to by the end of the week, which I was very happy with. He was able to pretty consistently um, label three items. Very good at switching, which is really demonstrating that he's not just scrolling sounds anymore. He's really remembering what those things are and actually adding a label to it. So that was a really great achievement, I think, by the end of the five days that we were really, really happy to see. 
Thank you for watching today and I hope you join us for our next family.